Good afternoon and, and welcome to the second annual Salem County Economic Opportunity Forum. Uh, we did this last year. This is sp sponsored by the Economic Development Council. First, we, I want to thank Atlantic City Electric. Not only we push it as much as we can. We make them turn the lights on for us, as you saw. We, we actually ask for computers and more than one. And so, but I really appreciate them as, as allowing us to use this facility. They really do. They support us from the economic development side. I'd like to thank all of you for coming. This is your time too, so I appreciate that. Uh, I have to thank. Kathy Mills for putting all of this together. Um, Kathy, thank you for what you do through the year as the Executive Director of Economic Development. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the Deputy uh, Freeholder Director, Charlie Hassler, also. Well, likewise, with uh, Corey, thanks for coming out this afternoon. So you see we've got a lot of people in here that have a lot of interest in economic development. There's a lot of things that are happening in the county. But it's, uh, you know, we're going to start opening up and, and talking more about the, all the projects. And I'm not sure where we're going today, but this, I want to make sure everybody keeps that in mind. What's good for one municipality is good for the county. Thank Kathy, you, everybody, thanks. for coming today. We really appreciate your time. Um, you know, it's an effort to get out and, and get here sometimes, so thank you. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about our speaker. Um, Jim Alley is the mayor of Collingswood, New Jersey. And... Uh, so why would we have him here? Well, many of you know that Collingswood has gone through an incredible renaissance, and Mr. Malley has been integral in that from the beginning of that process. Uh, the borough's redevelopment of the Parkview Apartments Complex was reported by the New York Times as a model for public-private partnership, and this is wonderful, one of the most transformed communities in America um, by Forbes magazine. So we're delighted that Mayor Malley could be here today with us, um, we look forward to your presentation, however that unfolds, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm also looking forward to hearing the questions that you have for him afterwards. So thank you, Jim, for coming today. Let me start, for those of you that may not be as familiar with Collingswood, we sit um, on the eastern border of the city of Camden. Uh, we're two and a half square miles, 14,000 people. Um, we, um, one of our saving graces, one of the things that really helps us is that we um, we are on the, um, the Paco speed line. Um, and so we have, uh, and we have an old town, kind of Maybury downtown um, uh, Main Street, okay? Um, this crowd, I think I can use the Maybury. I literally, I'm getting to the point now, sometimes when I do this, I have younger folks ask, what is Maybury, okay? <laughs> have that happen all the time now. Um, I, so the other day was somebody, we, my wife and I were in New York a couple weeks ago and we saw a taping of Murphy Brown, okay? And I was telling some folks and some of my staff who's in their 20s and they said, what's Murphy Brown? Like, what is that? It's like, well, um, so we've got some good bones, okay? We have some good bones. But over the years, uh, we moved into town in 82, I'm from, originally from Philly, uh, we moved into town in 82. And Collingswood was struggling along. Um, you know, a lot of the stories that have, have been kind enough to write about us and how we've turned things around, um, you know, always painted as like, you know, the dark ages when we moved in. Uh, and, and a good friend of mine who I served with for some time, uh, who was the mayor when we moved in, uh, actually I bought my house from the guy, he was the mayor who I bought my house from. Um, but I say like, you know, it was good enough for us to move here. Like it was all good enough for us to, for us to move in. Uh, but we were struggling from really two things, sitting next to the city of Camden and the beginnings of economic deterioration and the problems that were going on, crime going on in the city, beginning to leak over into our town. Um, that coupled with the, um, the changes beginning in the 60s into the 70s of the mall, Cherry Hill Mall. Cherry Hill Mall opening up was pretty devastating for our downtown. Um, and had the same effects on the city of Camden, on their, you know, their downtown, another little piece. The riots were one thing, Cherry Hill um, Mall sure doesn't help when you've now got everybody deciding they want to go drive their cars, you know, park in these vast seas of parking lot, and then go inside a little town to go do their shopping. Um, so so we, had, and we had a lot of other issues that, that came with that. Um, um, Kathy made mention of a program we did with duplexes. We had in the 70s and into the 80s, we had a lot of people taking some of the big old Victorians and converting them into three and four units. Uh, we would have um, 
you know, mom and dad owned the house, dad passed away, mom, um, you know, couldn't quite keep up with the bills, so gee, let's split it into two or three units, mom can rent, she can still live there. Then when mom passed on, they, the kids all sold that to an investor from Norristown, and he didn't have the same concerns about keeping the property up, you know, making sure the folks that were there were, were good neighbors. Um, and so we had issues where literally in just about every neighborhood in our town, on every block, they, they could all, during our elections, they could all point to like the problem duplexes in the neighborhood. Okay. So we had a lot of issues going on and we, um, um, we, we began, you know, we, we kind of tried to address, and I'll try to give you some of the themes over, you know, I've been doing this for a few days now, some of the, the things that we try to deal with. And one of them for me is like always keeping a top 10 list. Like always knowing what we're trying to address. What are the worst things? Some of them are long term, some of them are short term. Uh, some you can deal with right away, some you got to spend more time on planning, it's going to cost more money, it's going to take some, some, um, some pretty, pretty creative ideas to try to address. Um, when we started, when I first came into office, I'm the new guy, we're a commission form of government, so there's only three of us, uh, which in my opinion is the greatest form of government in the history of the world. Uh, because you've got to talk to one other guy and go, would you like to do this? Is it a good idea? And he goes, yeah, I do. It's like, okay, then we can go do it. Okay? Um, so our, the, the form of government helps us be very nimble, be very quick. Um, that can have its downsides. Uh, you can make mistakes, but it's, it's quick. All right? And so when I'm the new guy, gets on, get on the commission with two, two fellows that have been on for a while, they give me as a first project this... Um, Parkview Apartments, so at the time it was called the Sutton Towers. It's a thousand unit apartment complex. It's on the White Horse Pike and Collings Avenue in Collingswood. Four towers of 250 units. Uh, it doesn't fit into the town at all. Uh, it's one of those things like why, what were they thinking, okay, when they did this? Um, but those were the days when the mayor at the time was an insurance agent. And so he sold all the insurance to them and another, like, you, you, it was a different world. It was a very different world. So we built this complex. When it was built in the 50s, it was the place. We had a Supreme Court justice living there. The congressman for the district lived there. It was a white-gloved doorman. It was, it was, it was the, the, the best, okay? But then over time, we get into the, to the late 80s, it's not the best, um, and when I came into office, it was, being, it was owned by a group of guys who really did not have the capital to keep up with it. Uh, they, were, um, they were a group of guys who, this was their, they do little strip malls, and this was their first venture into a residential project. Uh, they chose as their first project a thousand unit apartment complex. Uh, they did not have the capital to handle it, so they... Uh, they did a great job. They signed up the Navy, filled up the place uh, when the Naval Yard was humming. When the Navy decided, no, we're going to move guys now, they went to like 50% occupancy, killed them. They didn't have the capital to withstand that. And they began this horrible slide where we had tenants groups uh, in arms, lawsuits getting filed, construction code violations, property maintenance violations, fire code problems. It was like a story every week in the Courier Post about more issues going on there. And it was viewed within our town as this is the sign. Like this, this is the sign, we're going to be Camden in another few years, okay? It was like the beginning of the end of, of um, what, you know, what our community has been. And so I'm the new guy, that's the project they give me, let's, let's try and figure something out. Um, and so I spent, that was 89 I got in, we did a deal in 96, okay, and I worked pretty hard on it for all that time, and we had three different deals that collapsed, had the county involved for a while, then that deal didn't work, um, and we finally ended up doing a deal, um, and I'll just tell you two little, two little anecdotes in it, because I think they're things to, to, to keep in mind with respect to redevelopment, which we've used a lot. And actually, this process is what changed my legal career because those seven years I spent working on that, I learned the law inside out. And after we finally did a deal, I started getting calls by other town. Cherry Hill started getting calls by other town saying, can you come help us with this, with that, you know, with this problem? 
and so we started that, and now that's kind of what we've been doing for a long, long time. Um, so, but there's two things that I want you to, to know. Um, one is, um, we, well, we make great use of the redevelopment law, but one is we, we utilize condemnation laws. Never actually condemn the property, but because we had that authority to be able to condemn a property, we, um, we I never forget the meeting with the owners of the, the apartment complex who were, were filing a tax appeal, had a tax appeal pending, and at the time they were grossly overassessed. It was a $30 million assessment. They came in with numbers shown it's really worth 11. Okay, and I told them that's fine, but we have this redevelopment we want to do, and if it's worth 11, we're going to come and condemn it and take it for 11. Okay, well the mortgage, GE Capital, the, the financing they had was 30 million dollars. Okay, so they were like, whoa, 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 bear, you know, we don't, you know, we don't want to do it. And I was like, no, if it's worth 11, I understand, that's fine. We're going to take it. Okay, we're going to buy this for 11. And what that did was force everybody to the table. And they brought GE Capital in, and we, and through GE Capital, they connected us with a workout guy, a guy out of New York, a fellow Richard Cohen. They brought him in, and GE Capital used him and put him in projects that were problems. Okay. And he would, and we put together a plan with him, where the borough, we actually went out and borrowed and invested eight million dollars into this project. Okay, um, the, they used, we used the county improvement authority. They used it, what were called low floaters, low floater bonds that, that, that whose interest rates adjust every week. Okay, um, so we put together this financing and this project in a very, in a way that. Um, the only way to make it work, which was the town owned the land so that we could, no offense to the county, but cut out like a county share of, of taxes so that we could use that revenue to help cover our debt that we, we, we had borrowed, okay? Uh, structured a pilot agreement and put together a plan to redo this property. Uh, our money invested was in a participating mortgage so that if things went well at the end of all this, um, we would get repaid and participate in the upside, okay? If things didn't go well, okay, then we were, we were in, as, I, the, as we did our public meetings, we were in as bad a shape as we, are, we were yesterday, okay? So um, in doing a project like that, just things to, to keep in mind or any of this economic development is we meeting it to death, okay? Uh, we did meetings in each uh, neighborhood at the neighborhood schools. I did a, a couple uh, full everybody in town invited meetings. Um, I, we, did, we did a model at the apartment complex and let people come on tours to see what the units look like, what they were going to look like. And then we did something that I, I still use today, which is we did an analysis of what it costs to do nothing. Okay. And that is, I, I just can't tell you how important a tool that is, and it's not something that, for even electeds, it's not obvious, okay? Certainly for people, it's not, okay? Because when they hear you're going to go borrow eight million bucks and going to invest it in this, you know, private apartment complex, it's like, well, look, who, how are we going to pay for that? What's the cost of that? And the offset to that is to say, well, do you know what it's costing us today? Like, what does it cost us to do nothing, to leave it as it is? Because we have this many extra police calls. We have this much of our building code offices devoted to it. They haven't paid their taxes for two years. This is what it costs. Like all of those things put together and say, this is what it costs if we do nothing. And the analysis that we did, oh, there's that little detail, huh? The analysis that we did laid out for them and calculated um, that, that while there was a cost, to do the, the project that we had put together. There was a prospect in that project that, that we're gonna get repaid at the end. And when you compare the relative cost to this investment to the cost we already had today, it wasn't that different, okay? It was gonna cost everybody like another 50 bucks a year, we're gonna take a shot and go do this. Uh, we had great support on it, people were all gung-ho for it. They wanted to rock and roll. All right, well, there's this, at least there's a picture. Um, they, um, and, and we move forward with the project, okay? Well, that, that project, just the, the announcement of the deal um, 
changed perceptions. Okay, it, within town, it, that that to me is our the pivotal moment for us because people in town now felt that we don't have to move to Medford. That's like that's the drill that we went through. People would be like, "Oh man, you know things are going to be rough. Things aren't great. I'm worried about what's coming," and they would move. Medford, Marlton, they, they would get further away from Camden. That was the drill, okay? And when that happened for us, that's the point when people felt like, you know, I think we're going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. Now, nothing had changed yet, okay? A lot of work, a lot of work in redoing a 1,000-unit apartment complex. But it's very important that change in the perception all of a sudden made people believe it's going to get better. We're going to be okay. And once you're able to do that, it all gets better.